I really love cars and just grew up with cars and tractors and that was kind of my passion from an early age. I grew up in Chesterfield, England. It's actually 2001 was the year when I first came over here and that was uh, to take part in a tour which was from College Station, Texas to Prudhoe Bay in Alaska. It was a 12,000 mile tour, it took 73 days and I used a 1926 Model T on that tour. Guys in their cars, is there any obsession that runs hotter? For antique auto enthusiast Ross Lilliker, the T in Model T might as well stand for true love. On that tour, I met my wife and uh, held a long distance relationship for uh, two or three years until the point that we decided that uh, I was going to move to America and uh, start a family and uh, career here. The Ford's Model T, it was the car that not only changed the world, but Ross's world as well. His dad restored them as a hobby. His father-in-law sold antique parts. And now Ross makes his living fixing up century-old clunkers in College Station. Well, this is a restoration shop that I own here with my wife. It's a family business. I'm a one-stop shop for Model T's and Model A's. So I'll do anything from service work, engine rebuilds, to full frame-off restorations. Well, I usually go by the, uh, the sort of theory that if you can recognize it, you can restore it. What's this one, Ross? Oh, this is my favorite Model T, a 1912 touring car. I just love the brass. Oh, beautiful. This is the Roadster, and everybody remembers the rumble seat, which of course is in here. You have the seat cushion in the back, um, and uh, people used to get in the back. There's you uh, step, get in? step plate on step the bumper. Step here. Yeah. Step here. Step here. And then step into in. the car. Onto the seat. Yeah, there you go. Gotta get in. Easier said than done. Now I got Never a question out. for you. Okay. Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> I've been waiting to say that for a long time. I see what you did there. Lilliker Antique Auto opened in 2008, exactly 100 years after the first Ford rolled off the assembly line. They produced about 20 million Model T's and Model A's, and many have survived to this day. Ross specializes in bringing them back to their factory fresh form and function. All you're going to do is push the left one down when you want to go. Uh-huh. And when you want to stop, release the left one and push the right one. Otherwise, we're taking off. I was driving a Model T as soon as I could reach the pedals. I, I actually drove a Model T before uh, a regular car because the pedals are so much closer to the driver. I like the simplicity of them, really. You look at modern cars and they're all very complicated under the hood. Um, and Model Ts, they really are an education on how simple a car can be. The closest thing today is probably a tractor. Ha! That was a piece of cake. Well done. Thanks. Customers have come from all over the country to get Ross to take a look under the hood. You hop on in, I'll crank it up. Generally, it's not very fast or cheap to refurbish these rusted relics, at least compared to a modern car. But maintaining a Model A isn't about getting from point A. They are often heirlooms, and a family connection over a car is something Ross understands deeply. I've got two daughters, uh, one of which is nine, and she'll, she'll drive the Model T. I've got a little boy who's two years old, and you can already tell the twinkle in his eye when the Model T engines start up, and there's just something uh, in the way you're wired up. You're either a car person or you're not. Should we start the car? Yeah. Okay, turn the keys. We pull the choke. Yay! It's often been said that Henry Ford put the world on wheels, but little did he know that his original cars would still be rolling along today. Enjoy that? Yeah. 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 Love it. That impressive feat wouldn't be possible without people like Ross Lilliker. Oh, don't forget to retard the spot. 
who rev up every time they rev one up. So when I moved to America, my father said I would spoil a good hobby by uh, working on it. Uh, and I'm fortunate to say that, that that hasn't happened. I still love every day coming to work. Uh, I, I love uh, the cars that come in. And of course, when you've worked on one and you've built an engine to fire it up and hear it run for the first time, I still get the buzz from doing that. My commute to work is over here. It's a 300 yard commute. I can pat my donkey on the way to work and go home. I love that story. Me too, and we've got plenty more where that came from. Just click on the subscribe button and keep traveling with us.